How do industry producers get their mix sounding so good on their beats? It's likely you've watched producer cook up videos or listened to beats and hit songs and wondered how they got their mix to sound like that. The truth is it's not as hard as you think and you can get a really clean mix on your beats in under 10 minutes. I'm also gonna go into a very, very important part of mixing which most producers ignore which is how the mix sounds on different listening devices. Most people don't have Yamahas to listen on, they have phone speakers or AirPods or car speakers, and I'm gonna show you how to get your mix sounding good on every single one of them. Let me jump in and show you how to do it. Now you're probably assuming that I'm a multi-platinum producer, and you'd almost be right. Currently RIAA paper plate certified, but jokes aside, I work with a multi-platinum production team every single day, so I'm gonna show you the actual production strategies these multi-platinum producers are using every single day. The process of getting a clean mix doesn't just start when you're actually mixing your tracks, it starts when you're creating your track. By picking layers that aren't gonna clash with each other and picking high quality samples that don't have EQ ranges, they're gonna distort your track and make it hard to mix. So I'm gonna go through and make a beat and show you things you need to be looking out for when making a beat to make sure it'll be easy to mix. So I'm gonna grab this melody here from one of the waveground packs. So now that I have the melody, I'm gonna go and grab some drum samples I can use in this beat. A couple things to look out for when choosing samples. You wanna make sure that your 808 isn't super distorted because that can go and really clash with everything. Um, if you have any snares that you wanna put in as snare rolls, I recommend choosing some really short and sharp ones because having a lot of those coming in, if it's a really big snare with a massive tail, can clash with everything later on in the beat. Now that we've finished making this beat, I'm gonna go and send all of the layers to the mixer track. So I do this by clicking and dragging along all of these, going into the mixer, right clicking on insert one and saying root selected channel starting from this track. And now we're gonna start the mixing process. So how I like to do it, first off, make sure that you don't have anything loaded on the master channel here. A lot of the times there'll be a plugin default loaded like um, Fruity Soft Clipper or Fruity Limiter. You wanna make sure that nothing is on there. So one thing you can do that will make mixing much easier is go and put your master track in mono. So what you do is you drag this knob here until it says 100% merged up in the top left. And what this does is it means your left ear and right ear are hearing the exact same thing, which makes it much easier to hear the levels and much easier to mix. Just make sure to turn it off when you're finished mixing. This is a hack I learned from watching a lot of industry producers mix their beats and I've noticed that a lot of them do this. So to start, you're gonna wanna go through and listen to each layer one by one and bring them in one at a time. So starting with this melody here. I'm gonna open up an EQ and I'm gonna cut out some of the lows and some of the highs. So what I've done is added a high and low pass filter here which cuts out some of these low frequencies and also cuts out some of the high frequencies and it's gonna stop it from clashing with the kick and the bass. And what you'll notice is if you listen to this bypassed and non-bypassed, you can't hear that big of a difference but it's gonna make a massive difference when it comes to the cleanness of the mix. So listening to this melody once it's mixed, you'll notice it sounds really clean um, and it'll be really easy to put drums on these without them clashing. I'm now gonna go and add the drum layers in one by one and make sure that they're leveled correctly. It's really tempting to go and make your kick really loud and punchy, but on most listening devices, it's not gonna be able to handle the same amount of bass and kick as studio monitors or headphones will. So make sure to lower your kick down so it's not up too loud in the final mix.
One thing you can do that will give the illusion of your 808 being louder without actually making it louder is adding a little bit of distortion, which is gonna make it sound warmer and fuller, but it's not really gonna increase the volume of the 808. So what I've done is gone through layer by layer, go and adjust the volumes of them to how loud I want them to be. And as you can see, the final mix is hitting at around minus three decibels. This is the part where most producers end up making a lot of mistakes and they'll make their kick and 808 too loud. They'll use melody layers that clash together. They'll make their hi-hat too loud or too quiet, their snares too loud or too quiet, or they'll add in too many layers. And what happens is this final mix is unbelievably crowded and it's really, really hard to master. I remember in the first beats that I made, when I really liked a layer, I would go in and make the volume really loud, but then I wanted the snare, for example, to stand out. So I would go and boost the snare up even louder and it ended up sounding horrible and being really hard to mix. So one thing that I've tried to do is mix all of these at a really low volume so that the final mix is kind of quiet and then we can go in and master it. The first step was sound selection. The second step was actually going and leveling the track. And the third step is going to be mastering it, which is what's going to increase the volume from around minus three decibels or however loud your mix is up into about zero without it clipping. One surprisingly popular way to master your tracks, even among the platinum producers, is to use Fruity Soft Clipper and just drag up the post. So the threshold knob changes when the compressor actually kicks in. Um, so if you lower it here, it's gonna kick in at a much, much lower volume. Um, and by increasing the post, that's gonna increase the actual gain, which increases the volume of your track. So as you can see without it, it's quiet down at about minus three, but when we turn it on, it's much, much louder. So that's one way of doing it. I usually don't use that one. I use um, Isotope, where is it? I saw Nick Mira do this in a video years ago and the final mix sounded really good. So I decided to go and buy Isotope Ozone. I think he was using Ozone 7 or Ozone 5 at the time, but using that maximizer, it makes the track and the final mix sound really good. So the threshold here changes the volume. As you drag it down, the final mix will be louder. So the character changes the attack and the release time of the maximizer. And then from there, you can lower the volume of the track if you think it's too loud by changing the ceiling here. So those are some very powerful strategies you can use when mixing and mastering tracks. The main things to keep in mind are use sounds that don't clash. Make sure your 808 isn't distorted. When you're actually leveling your tracks, make sure to go through one by one and listen to them and cut out any harsh frequencies. Um, even if you have to go through one by one multiple times to get the level sounding right, it's definitely worth doing. Um, I recommend mixing with your stereo separation in mono, which is 100% merged. Make sure to change it back to 0% after. And your final mix should be around minus three decibels before you go and add a maximizer or a master, which is gonna increase the volume to around zero decibels. And it should sound something like this. Thank you. 